Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Why did it happen this way? This is a question that I would find myself asking as a child when I would be sitting in the pews listening to my pastors. Whether it was Lent or Easter or Christmas, I would hear these stories about Jesus and ask myself, why did it happen this way? Why wouldn't Jesus just use his power to change everything? Why wouldn't Jesus just act like a superhero and fix everything, save the day and make everything all right? Why did it happen this way? What is the purpose of this story being told this way? It's kind of a bizarre and strange story when you read the Cliff Notes version. The creator of the universe came to Earth as a baby through an unimportant family. He grew up and would hang around fishermen, outcasts, and enemies. He would have incredible power of healing and multiplying that he would only use to help people who came to him in no other time. He would speak out against those in authority. He would die a terrible death. And then he would come back to life only to leave again. Why did it happen this way? What is the purpose of this story being told this way? Because how we tell the story matters. As we've walked through this Advent season, we've wrestled with the themes in the Gospel of Matthew of identity, tradition, inclusion, and now purpose. Identity focused on who Jesus was and who we are. Tradition focused on where Jesus came from and where we come from. Inclusion focused on who Jesus was with and who is with us. And so today we ask, why did it happen this way? Why did Jesus' story happen this way? Why do we tell our story this way? And how we tell our story matters also. Who we are, where we come from, who has been with us, these are critical points of our own story. They illuminate what is important to us. They illuminate who has influenced us in our lives. The first week of identity, I talked about how I was often asked as a child if I was going to be a pastor like my father. I could shorten my story to two lines. I was expected to be a pastor, and now I'm a pastor. But to say it that way would be a disservice to that story. It wouldn't speak to the struggles that I'd been through, the struggles that I still face today, the love and support that I received from my family during those hard times, the incredible love and support that I received from my church when grace was not deserved, and the many ways that God was entering my life through people around me and in signs all around me. I became a pastor so that my story could be hope for others. I became a pastor because God showed me what it meant to, to truly be in relationship with people and to see God in their lives. That's my story. And how I tell it, the people that I lift up, the themes that run through it, how I tell it matters. So why did Matthew tell Jesus' story this way? We could simply say Jesus came to save us, then Jesus saved us. But there is so much more to this story than that. Why it happened is so important. In a Christmas sermon in 1530, Martin Luther once wrote, If Christ had arrived with trumpets, and laying in a cradle of gold, his birth would have been a splendid affair, but it would not have been a comfort to me. He was rather to lie in the lap of a poor maiden and be thought of as little significance in the eyes of the world. Now I can come to him. Now he reveals himself to the miserable in order not to give any impression that he arrives with great power, splendor, wisdom, and aristocratic manners. 
in the times of the prophets. Emmanuel was supposed to come as a triumphant Messiah, a savior and king to rule the nations, to come in all glory, laud, and honor, and bring freedom to the kingdom of Israel. And yet, our Emmanuel, our God with us, comes as one of us. Born as a lowly infant to an unwed couple, it is in that way that our God comes to us, into the sin and brokenness of this world, completely vulnerable and in the lowest of places. It is into sin and brokenness that our Savior, our God, comes to us. It is in places that are messy and don't make sense. It is into the relationship of a young couple out of wedlock. It is in bread and wine or grape juice, two ordinary things that anyone could have. It is nailed on the cross, bearing the sin of the world completely alone. God comes to us in the places and times that we least expect. God comes to us in the ordinary. Because that is how we all know that we can know that God will be with all of us. As Martin Luther wrote, if Christ had arrived with trumpets and lain in a cradle of gold, his birth would have been a splendid affair. But it would not have been a comfort to me. He was rather to lie in the lap of a poor maiden and be thought of as little significance in the eyes of the world. Now I can come to him. Christ came in the ordinary so that each of us, every single one of us, would know that God came to be with us, too. Christ died as one of us so that we might always know in times of despair God is still with us, comforting and healing us in our brokenness and convicting us to see the brokenness of the world around us and be a part of the healing of this world. Our God is with us through everything. As Jesus said, and I will be with you until the end of the age. This is God's story with us. This is why Matthew tells the story in this way. It is God's story with us. So how do you tell your story? How do you tell the story of how you've come to this moment? Who are you? Where did you come from? Who has been with you? And how have you gotten here? What has shaped you? What have you fought through? What struggles have you overcome? What struggles are you facing now? These are all parts of our story that share our purpose, what drives us, what we are passionate about. They also help us to see and describe how God has been with us in our lives throughout our entire lives through every twist and turn, every struggle and doubt, and through our story we can see those moments more clearly. Emmanuel means God with us. The angel's words to Joseph were a promise and reminder to us all that God has come to be with all of us and share in our stories. Throughout our stories, Emmanuel is with us, guiding us, comforting us, and loving us. In Advent, we are reminded that God is here in our lives, that Jesus came to fulfill and show us that promise fully. God is with us in the messiness. God is with us in suffering. God is with us to the end of the age. God is always with us, Emmanuel. But God is here in us, too. Christ is alive in this world through our stories. Christ is alive in this world through our voices, through our hands, through our love and witness. This is our story, that we are the body of Christ in this world, here to help others know that Christ is here for them, that they are loved and cherished and their story is just as important as any other. The purpose of this story shows us how God's story is continuing through us and giving us purpose. That all of our stories have a purpose in this cosmic telling. But each of our stories needs to be told. 
Each speaks to God acting in this world. Each individual story speaks to God's presence and love for all people. Stories that rise out of the unexpected. Stories that rise out of the ordinary. This is our story. This is the story of Emmanuel, God who is with us, now and forever. Amen.